Hello, I'm Linda Ann at Studio ABC. I'm on the design team for Paul USA and I am a video creator. Watch me create three-dimensional art with this wonderful product. I have never really been fond of these little wire knickknacks, but I found one in a thrift store, so why would I buy it? Well, I'm going to show you why. I bought it because for a quarter, I had a ready-made armature to make this. I have a piece of an old, um, it's not really a t-shirt, it's kind of a spaghetti string uh, blouse. I have a piece of it left over and it is so soft. It's dingy and ugly, but the fabric's super soft because it's so old and been washed so many times and it's like t-shirt material. So this is what I'm going to use on my angel. It's one of the things I'm going to use. I also, later you'll see a piece of a lace tablecloth that I'll bring out. And I bought that lace tablecloth for, I don't remember exactly how much, way less than a dollar at the same thrift store where I bought the Wire Angel. I drink a lot of G2 while I'm doing my projects, and no, I'm not advertising that but the box that it comes in is covered with plastic. This Pauver Paul doesn't really stick to plastic. That's a good place for me to brush the Pauver Paul onto the fabric strips that I'm going to use. So I'll cut these into manageable sizes. First thing is to cut off all of the parts that are like the cuffs for neckline, any of the seams that are big and rough and bulky. All I want is that soft fabric from the middle. I kind of got a bonus here because the yoke on this blouse uh, was double thickness and when I opened it up I had twice as much. I had to remove the little furry balls from the middle where it's been laundered so many times. You don't want that to get in the way. It's a nuisance when something gets into your pauper paw. The transparent pauper paw is one of my favorites to use because it will show the color of the fabric and this dingy fabric is actually going to look pretty after I cover it with pauper paw. But also you can change the color of it by adding uh, a product like the product from Color Art called Primary Elements to it or a little bit of paint or after it's dry you can paint over it. There's a good open time with pauper paw. You don't have to rush through what you're doing. Uh, it won't dry immediately, but one of the things I like to do is pour it into a smaller container, just what I think I'll use in just a few minutes, and I just keep pouring out of the big container into a smaller one so that only a small amount is exposed to air at a time. Here's that lace tablecloth. Did you ever buy something that you couldn't really use, but and you planned to use it on a craft, but you hated to cut it up because it was so pretty? I can't really use this. I didn't have a table that it was going to fit. It was an oval. I used to have oval tables, but now mine's round. And it just wasn't going to fit, but I had a hard time cutting it. Anyway, I wasn't sorry once I did cut it because it's going to make a really beautiful angel. I'm going to use this for the wings. It's on top of that box now, and I'm spreading out the pauper paw making sure that it's completely saturated. My preferred method of adding pauper paw to fabric is by using an old tacky brush that I'm not going to use anyplace else. You can see this one's kind of sprung wings on the side. Uh, but I, I just use an old brush that I'm not going to use on anything else and apply it to the fabric, directly to the fabric. There's other methods of doing it, but this is what works for me. Also, sometimes I flip that fabric over and give it a coat on the back too. It just kind of depends on what you're working with and what kind of fabric, whether it actually absorbs and sucks up all of that uh, product into the fabric. You want it to be completely saturated. What you see here is actually two pieces of lace. I've laid one on top of another one so that any of the excess that soaks through this first piece of lace will go to the second one. And then after I use it, I, I'll just peel it away from the first one and use the first one and then after I use the first one on the art I'll go back to that second one and add whatever pauper paw I need to add to it. Do you know what I found most challenging about being a pauper paw 
uh, video creator. The fact that it's kind of hard to keep it in focus because I'm turning it so much. I'm trying out things. I didn't know exactly how I wanted these wings. At first I thought I wanted them to come and lap over each other and be a smooth piece. But as I started looking at it, I really liked the way it looked when it draped down and just hung down in the drapes. Now here I'm still trying to force it. I'm trying to force it to stick together so that I can make a flat piece there. But give yourself permission to make changes when you're working on art. If something looks better, go for it. In places where you can allow the fabric to, to drape naturally, it's going to give it a much more graceful appearance than trying to force the fabric to go where it doesn't want to go. Another thing, all art can be a little unpredictable, so give yourself permission to just pull things apart and start over. I did that on a project once before, and I did it on this wing. I didn't like the way it was looking. The fabric was, actually I had the fabric turned the wrong way was the problem. Later in this process, when I turn the fabric a different direction, and drape it over the wings, it looks better. But at this point, I didn't know that. So I had to start over. I tried using the t-shirt fabric on her wings. And while that wasn't exactly the look I wanted, I knew it was gonna cover up the wire. And I knew I could add another layer later, which is exactly what I did. I used this to cover her wings up, struggled with it a bit here and there, but it went on. One of the things that I find with Paul is that when it doesn't stick right away, it's too wet. Sometimes you need to give it some time to dry a little bit and get a little more tacky, and then you can manipulate it and make it stick better. So I worked with it, and I put the t-shirt fabric on the wings, but I didn't leave it t-shirt fabric on the wings. That just helped me cover up things. Okay, I admit that t-shirt fabric didn't look all that attractive on those wings, but when I started covering the t-shirt fabric with the lace, that, that little bit of padding underneath gave it just enough to cause the lace to drape nicely. I did manipulate it here and there just a little bit, and as I said, I, you have to go back sometimes when it's not sticking right away. You have to learn that it's time to wait and go back when it's a little uh, more glueable. Is that a word? Glueable? And you see this is not laying down exactly right, but it will. Uh, if I just leave that for a little bit and come back to it, then I can drape it to look like this other wing. While I give the lace a little drying time, I might as well go ahead and start with the body of the dress. Her original wire art gown was more of a fitted look, a um, form-fitting look. And I'm going to let this be more of a flowing gown look to accentuate the nice folds in the fabric. To make the seams lie down flat on the dress, I found that sometimes it was necessary to use my brush and add just a little more poverpal. The learning curve is it's a balance between not quite dry enough and just a little too dry. It's probably about now when I first began to really appreciate the difference in textures between the t-shirt material and the lace fabric. Those really looked awesome together. This is the back of the angel, but I need to do something about those arms, so I'm going to turn her around, and I'm just going to drape separate pieces over the arms. If you don't want your best scissors to stick together, don't use them. These are not my best scissors. These are what I use with Paw for Paw. 
and I always keep a, a jar near me for anything that I don't want the pauper pole to stick to. I keep a jar of water and I just douse it immediately in that water. You can soak it off. It comes off your hands, it comes off of other things, but you don't want it to set up. So I wound this fabric around and let a little bit of it hang down, knowing that when it gets leather hard, I can trim off some with some good sharp scissors when it's not wet. I'll trim off some of that to be the shape that I want it to be on the drapes down hanging from the arms. I walked away for a few minutes and when I came back the wings were dry enough that I could pull them out, stretch them out if I wanted to, but they would still go back into shape easily. I could just push them right back. So I mixed some golden nugget primary elements with the leftover pulver pawl that I had there in the jar, in the container, and I'm just edging the bottom of her wings and I'm going to edge the top of the wings with this. And when I felt like I needed to, uh, I pulled the wings out and edged the parts that were on the inner folds. Pretty much I got most of it done without doing that. You can find the Golden Nugget color in the Fran Papillon uh, group of primary elements if you go to colorart.com. And the primary elements just mix beautifully with Pauper Paul. Here it looks like a creamy color. That's because the Pauver Paul is white, but when it, uh, remember I'm using transparent Pauver Paul, so when it dries, the white will go away, the cream will go away, and this gold will shine. I find that when I'm making one of these sculptures that I always miss some little place. See there at the bottom of her skirt? That's going to be easy to fix. I'll just drape another piece of fabric right over that when I'm ready to, to go back and fix those things. There's also a place under her arm that I'm going to patch. And it won't ever show that I patched it. It'll just look like part of the dress. At this point, I'm looking at the face and thinking, what do I do to that? How am I going to get it smooth? That's a, that's a subject that Vicki Ross and I have discussed is like getting things smooth with Pauper Paul. It's going to take on whatever's under it, so it's going to have that rough appearance if I cover it with Pauper Paul. I don't, didn't like this wire when it was all wire. I didn't like the looks of it. But I think just a little wire here and there will give it an artistic appearance. I considered taking foil and smoothing it out over that until I had a smooth surface and then trying to put the fabric over that and making a smooth surface. But really I think the artistic value, the aesthetic value, would be lost if I did that. So I'm going to try leaving her face as the wire and I'll add some hair to her face and we'll see how that looks. As far as the ornament that she's holding, I kind of think of that as the world instead of a Christmas ornament and I, I definitely am going to leave it just the wire. I'm still debating at this point about the face. I'm going to see how the hair looks and then I'll make the decision. But I know that the ball is going to be the wire. Here's another Pauver Paul product. It's made out of cotton, 100% cotton. It's like cotton string, so it really absorbs the Pauver Paul and any pigment that you put with it. And I'm using the same Golden Nugget and Pauver Paul mixture. I dipped it into the uh, mixture of Pauver Paul and Golden Nugget primary elements, and now I'm arranging it and shaping it with the uh, handle end of my brush. You might not be able to find the same wire angel that I did, but keep an eye out at thrift stores for things that you could use as an armature for a Pauver Paul creation.
video description box below for the products that I used from Paul USA and from ColorArt.com. And please give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, share this on your social media. That's something that a lot of people don't do very often and it would really help. And by all means, subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.